All right, let's jump into it with World War III. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, people are talking about World War III, uh, uh, panicking, hysteria, uh, nuttiness. Uh, why? Because uh, Biden finally, after dithering for uh, you know two and a half years, has approved uh, that Ukraine use uh, American weapon systems uh, to fire against uh, military positions within Russia. So uh, some of the uh, medium-range uh, missiles that the United States has provided, uh, the Ukrainians cannot be used for what they were designed to do, that is to actually fire uh, for medium-length distances, which would place them into, um, uh, you know, into, into Russia. So uh, there's a lot of panic around this. Uh, it, it, there seems to be panic, seems to be just the, the, the regular feature of anything to do with Putin. Uh, it, 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 everything is escalation and, oh, my God. And it's notice, notice, it's always interesting, the World War Three stuff is Putin invades Ukraine. That's not leading to World War III. Um, you know, North Korea sends troops to fight on uh, Putin's side. That's not leading to World War Three. But, I don't know, Ukraine fighting back in February 2022 when, you, when Russia invades, that's World War III. Um, sending guns and ammunition to Ukraine, that will definitely cause World War III. Uh, you know, sending medium-sized artillery or, or missile systems to uh, Ukraine, even though they're restricted and only firing on Ukraine territory, that definitely will cause World War III. Um, I mean, sending uh, tanks and airplanes from NATO countries, uh, old Soviet-style tanks and weapon systems to Ukraine, that, that, that is World War III, no question. And you could go on and on. I mean, um, <clears throat> letting Ukraine strike Crimea, World War III. Letting Ukraine strike Russia, um, World War III. Letting Ukraine, in, you know, invade Russia, as they have in Kursk, World War III. Sending M6, uh, M16s, F-16s to Ukraine, F-16s. That is unquestionably, for sure, no doubt about it, World War III. And of course, it doesn't only apply to Ukraine. Everything is always the West's fault. Killing Soleimani way back when was going to lead to World War III. You know, striking Iranian facilities in Syria by the Israelis was definitely going to get World War III. And then killing Hanaya, killing uh, Nasrallah, uh, uh, killing Sinwar, striking Hezbollah, beepers, World War III. In other words, what so many people out there, left and right, depending on the issue, right, depending on which war we're talking about, would like the West to do is just roll over and pretend to be dead and let the Putins, the Hezbollahs, the Iranians, the Hamases of the world just roll right over us. Because, God forbid, World War III. Now, of course, nobody wants World War III. But, but let's remember that first, what are you going to do? You're going to not defend yourself because World War III? You're going to just agree to become a satellite of Putin's, Xi's, Khamenei's, North Korea's, because you're afraid of World War III? And why do you think the other side is not afraid of World War III? Why is the assumption is that, you know, they want World War III even though they will be annihilated in World War III? They don't value their lives. They don't care. Now, maybe that's true of the Iranians. They, they do get 72 virgins, but I don't think Putin gets 72 virgins. It's just such a sign of weakness, such a sign of pathetic compromise, anti-escalation, just, just give in. Let the bad guys win because we don't have enough confidence in our own ability. We don't have enough confidence in our own uh, legitimacy. We don't have enough confidence in our own uh, in the truth of our cause. In the goodness of our cause. So let the other side win, because World War III. Fear. Fear is such a, um, such a, uh, a powerful emotion. 
a, such a destructive emotion, mostly, uh, because it prevents you from doing what is right, prevents you from doing what is good, you know, prevents you from doing what is necessary, and opens you up to nonsense, to conspiracy theories, to uh, just just garbage. I mean, again, Putin understands this. Trump understands this. Xi understands this. People with that authoritarian, I don't know, what do you call it, uh, ability, that authoritarian sense of people, understand that to rule people, you want to make them afraid. Uh, and this is true uh, also on the left. That is, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the elites on the left. They, they, you know, if you're afraid, then you'll rush to them for advice. You'll rush to them for comfort. You'll rush to them for leadership to tell you what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. So every time you see this World War III, be aware. Now, uh, the one area... Where I worry about World War III, I, again, I don't think it's going to happen, but I worry a little bit, is China. Um, just because I see, I think this administration, our administration, the, the, the U.S. administration, is so incompetent, is going to be so incompetent, and so bullheaded and stupid, that just like Kennedy and Johnson got us into the Vietnam War, without us even noticing. These guys are going to get us into some kind of war with China without us even noticing. Uh, y y you know, and, and, and instead of recognizing the threat that China poses and having a long-term real strategy around it, uh, uh, it, it seems like the people that Trump is surrounding himself for national security are intent on poking China and poking China and poking China and poking China. And poking China as if that is a sign of strength and as if that is strategy when that is the exact opposite. So, so if you're going to worry about World War III, I would worry about China and I would worry about the fact that the United States has not had a foreign policy strategy since World War II and now we really, really, really need it. Really, really, really need it. Um... Yeah, somebody wrote on Twitter, Biden uses his last few brain cells to push us into World War III before he is booted out of office. It's scandalous. <laughs> because Biden has authorized Ukraine to use at, uh, at AT AMC's long-range weapons for limited strike inside Russia. And this is in response, supposedly, to North Korea's deployment of thousands of troops. Tit for tat, tit for tat. They like tit for tat. Instead of just going, no, we want to win. So we're going to use the weapons necessary to win. Uh, does Iran not fear nuclear war at all? There is zero risk of Putin using nukes. Uh, I do fear nuclear war, absolutely. There is, there is absolutely a positive risk of Putin using nukes. And the weaker we are, the more hesitant we are, the more restraining of Ukraine we are, the more... Yeah, we don't want to escalate, we are, the more likely it is he'll use the nukes. If we had, from the beginning, backed Ukraine fully, gave them more weapons, allowed them to use it, provided them with whatever resources they needed to push the Russians back, and pulled the ambassador from Moscow and aggressively, aggressively promoted Ukraine victory, then I think Putin would have been, uh, would be reluctant to use nuclear weapons because he'd be afraid. He doesn't want to die. He knows that nukes would have him die in addition to a lot of Europeans and maybe a lot of Americans. Uh, it would be horrific. It would be the end of the world as we know it. The best way to stop that is to, without any equivocation, without any uh, a doubt, convince Putin that we would wipe out Moscow. And, you know, if he used a, a tactical nuke, which was what he'd use initially, would wipe out Moscow. If we made that clear, there would be no new World War III. And I worry about World War III with China because I think that, again, we're weak. We're Trump will be just as weak we'll, and, we'll, 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 and we'll be incompetent um, and we'll 
trickle ourselves into kind of a World War Three with China. And then, I, you know, China could convince itself that it could attack us with nukes before it could be, it would be annihilated. So um, that worries me. I also think that China's weapon systems are better than Russia's, uh, more dangerous than Russia's, including their nukes. So Russia has quantity, quantity, which is scary. But yeah, the, the way to deal with a bully is not to show weakness. That only encourages him. So yeah, I'm very concerned about Putin using a nuclear weapon. But this joke of every time America does anything semi-mildly, little bit assertive, it's World War III, is, is, is getting to be ridiculous. And, and it needs to be called out. I called it out when it was first done, and I'm calling it out again, and I'll keep calling it out because you can't live in fear. That, 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 you, you can't live in fear. You, you've got to be afraid, rationally afraid. Uh, and, and have a strategy on how to deal with the threat in spite of that fear. By the way, Russia continues to escalate, doing things that arguably it should lead to World War III. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, communication cable between Finland and Germany, the main communication link between Finland and Central Europe, and Western Europe has been destroyed, has, has stopped working. People suspect sabotage that looking into it. And then that was kind of yesterday discovered. And then today it appears that another undersea cable in the Baltic Sea, this one running from Sweden and Lithuania, was also damaged on Sunday. <coughs> so it appears, although it's too early to say it was Russia, but it's very likely to be Russia, that Russia is engaging in sabotage against um, uh, uh, clear Western interests uh, in the Baltic Sea. And, and partially, again, this is their attempt to push back against the fact that basically the Baltic Sea has become NATO's sea with, uh, with the, the Russians having a small naval base um, in the Baltic Sea, but basically everything else is NATO. Um, and this is a consequence of the fact that Finland joined NATO and now has basically made the Baltic Sea a NATO sea. And that the Russians can't be happy about that. So they're going to poke a, a needle as much as they can. Now, it seems like an act of war to cut cables from, and this is not Ukrainian cables. These are Swedish, German, Lithuanian, Finnish cables, all members of NATO. What is NATO going to do about it? Probably nothing. Weakness. Weakness. <laughs>